Welcome back to The Watch List. I'm Nicole Petalides, live at the New York Stock Exchange. Time to talk all about electric vehicles. Of course, we've heard from Rivian and Lucid, and we're seeing some down arrows today in a big way. For that, we welcome in our panel. Henry Green's with us, investment strategist at Crane Shares, and Corey Johnson, chief market strategist at the Futurum Group. Thank you both for being with us. Corey Johnson, I'll start with you. Um, what was your takeaway from what you heard? At Rivian, I'll start with that, which was down uh, 28%. I'll double check yeah. what it's down. Right now, 25%. I mean, it's getting crushed. What are your thoughts? Is there ever is it ever catching up? Well, I think, look, Rivian and Lucid uh, are coming out with, with bad news, both at the same time. They have a lot in common, and they're very different companies. The Rivian results uh, are really about, uh, well, they're really about the same thing. They're about this moment uh, that we're seeing across the electric vehicle industry when we're going from the early adopters to maybe the early majority. It's uh, Jeffrey Moore, the marketing strategist, the uh, organizational theory guy. He talks about this crossing the chasm and the difficulties companies has have when they have these really cool technologies that grow really fast, but when they want to jump into the mainstream, crossing that chasm is really difficult. And I think you see that from both these companies, while they're very different, both dealing with this difficulty of going from early adopters to a bigger market and the challenges that come with that in, in every respect, not least of which having the right products at the right time. Right. Look, uh, Rivian needs a lot of money. They really missed on their production outlook here, Henry. Um, you know, they're telling us 57,000 instead of 81,000 vehicles, a far cry from Tesla's 2 million plus. So tell me what you thought about Rivian, Henry. Yeah. Hi, Nicole. Thank you for having me. Um, I think that um, Rivian's earnings, you know, it's interesting because they actually beat slightly on the top line. Um, of course, they missed on yeah. EPS. Um, I think that not only their earnings, but the market's reaction just shows how sensitive markets are right now to electric vehicle companies. Um, yes, they have reduced uh, their production outlook. Their outlook was lower than most had expected. Um, and one of the reasons cited was slowing demand due to higher interest rates. And well, while that's true, I think a bigger issue here um, is the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, which has actually, you know, created better monetary financing conditions for EV makers, but it's also created more competition because now these companies, which, as um, as was just said, um, were, you know, focused on early adopters um, and people who were big fans of EVs. Now they're competing with the likes of GM, Ford, Stellantis, who have much larger production bases and are much better capitalized. Um, so that's a concern here. Um, when you think about Stellantis and, you know, the rest of the big three or, or just the com competitive nature abroad, Henry, um, what EV makers are best positioned right now? Uh, you know, I think it's hard to say. Um, I think that um, in the United States, it's very much up for grabs um, right now. Um, you know, we like to look at, of course, we look at international markets, too. Um, uh, in China, you know, we see BYD. Um, I think they're now uh, one of the largest car manufacturers in the world. Now, they don't only focus on EV, but they've been doing um, increasing numbers in, in electric vehicles um, in China. Um, and then uh, I think and then going back to the U.S., um, you know, I think Tesla, you know, still has the brand. Obviously, they have um, the economical, more economical, better priced models. And that's a place where Rivian um, you know, they haven't gotten to the production of those lower price models. And of course, Lucid is focused only on the luxury sector. Um, so I think really for yeah. to see wide adoption of EVs, okay. um, you yeah. need to see these more economical um, kind of mass market models. Yeah. Um, and then look, there, I'm going to jump in here because I'm running out of time and I want to get uh, Corey's thought on which um, he thinks is best position in the EV world. You know, at the same time, there was some thought that maybe demand for EVs was slowing. It was a fad. Um, then there was a call for more hybrids. You know, I guess we're back yeah. to EVs. What do you think here, Corey? Um, which ones are best positions to be the winners of the future? I, yeah, I bought a hybrid this year. Go figure. I didn't see that coming in my future. But, I, you know, I think that we, we focus so much on the stocks, which are going down, that we forget that the consumption is going up. Has the growth rate slowed? Absolutely. I think from Rivian, for example, they're talking about getting to gross profitability by the end of the year. Imagine selling something for more than it costs you to make it. Wouldn't that be a nice thing? 
They're not there yet, but it's early days still. I think you're going to see a lot of announcements out of Rivian. They're talking about in March, talking about their next round of vehicles. You know, Rivian's outselling Tesla in high-end uh, electric vehicles, uh, kind of a quiet fact there. And so as they start to retool their manufacturing, get towards gross profitability, and introduce the, their announcements, at least, of lower cost of products for the end of the year, uh, I think this world's going to change a lot. But absolutely, the big companies catching up on electric, is it going to be slow? Is it going to be bumps in the road? I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist that, Nicole. But yes, there are bumps in the road, but we clearly see a move towards yeah. electric vehicles, maybe slower than we the first thought, right. but it's still happening. Yeah, great to see you both. Corey Johnson, Henry Green, thank you. Great chat on EVs. Appreciate it.